That's how news whole NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg caught a classic squirrel, or rather bipolar, scouting out tearful wheelie dealing touts according to US intelligence. Turns out he was authorized to make a formidable suggestion. Allegedly overseas Pentertons got hold of the technical specifications of this top secret project and wept. Although Alabuga is not one of Putin's cartoons, there have been grim rumors since 2017 about a new type of weapon capable of surpassing nuclear in potential, or making it a dead pile of iron. So, Stoltenberg didn't say anything new. His information was as meager as it was five years ago, when the Skripal case was going on in a Connell, and the British were sweetly pleasuring themselves, scaring old ladies and drunken soccer fans with the punishments of heaven, prepared for them by the evil Putin. That's when the Daily Star came out saying that the Russians will launch missiles with Alabuga electromagnetic explosive generators that burn out all electronics, electrical household appliances, and power transmission systems. It is impossible to intercept such a thing, and all NATO nuclear capabilities are cheap pyrotechnics compared to the Russians' miracle weapons. British cesspit tabloids picked up the news and then a lot of fantastic things that Alabuga can destroy entire armies, get high-frequency radiation into the buried 100 meters deep concrete bunkers, and any military equipment within five miles from the epicenter of the explosion is out of order, if a mini-block of Alabuga placed on a drone. That in flight such a munition is capable of destroying airplanes, anti-aircraft missiles, and on the ground to block the automatic loading of tanks, explode artillery shells inside the gun turret and kill soldiers hiding underground at a depth of up to 100 meters with the help of radiation? In order to look convincing, the British experts gave a convincing act of the presence of microwave weapons in the ranks of the Russian armed forces on the example of remote demining vehicles 15M107, Listva. The same project, secret for many years, created in the interests of the strategic missile forces, designed to accompany the provision of combat duty mobile ground complexes. The unit is curious, technical specifications are a territory of guesswork and assumptions, but it is known for sure, Listva is equipped with a radio-electronic unit that creates a microwave pulse of sufficient power to affect metal parts, including components of electrical or electronic fuses of any mines. So the British, rich in morbid imagination, boldly assumed that if Russian microwave ovens are rolling around on the ground, why don't they fly? Although our entire expert community of the highest awareness was wry-faced, knowing nothing about Alabuga at all. In addition to vague gossip from the bowels of the military-industrial complex that electromagnetic missiles are actually being developed since 2011 in the bowels of the concerned Cret radio-electronic technology. Even some outlines of the terms of reference have leaked online. The Russian Ministry of Defense wished to have a munition that triggers a powerful explosive electromagnetic pulse at altitudes of up to 300 meters and instantly disables all enemy electronic devices within a radius of 4 to 5 kilometers. Depending on the settings of the combat unit, battle tablets, satellite terminals, sensitive radar units and ground communication systems, homing heads of high precision and guided weapons become useless. The idea is good, enter find on the battlefield a set of burned out microchips in that machine, which is any decent example of western weaponry without engineers. And here begins the shaky quagmire of speculation as to what the Alabuga EMP missile might be. Let's start with the simple fact that everything that highbrow people from Cret take on is effective, super innovative and very profitable. Radioelectronic Technologies is the flagship of avionics for the most advanced combat aircraft and helicopters of the Russian Air Force and manned spacecraft. Free of charge inertial navigation systems, pilot navigation complexes of onboard radioelectronic equipment, combat brio, radar complex arbolet, flight data collection and registration system and other 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 stuff. What often goes under the tag is unparalleled. Without irony, Cret has been on the cutting edge of import substitution of component base for our military industrial complex since 2007. As soon as the outgoing Prime Minister Vladimir Putin set such a task and forced the creation of the Council of General Chief Designers in the direction of rep systems and means. It is here that radio electronic technologies became an unquestionable leader, and after the Russian spring and sanctions obscurantism, the position on foreign and domestic markets has only strengthened. So the concern is quite capable of developing a missile with an electromagnetic warhead. Especially, the basic developments exist when a high-frequency generator creates a high-power electromagnetic field or pulse. Called the Sakharov generator, the future dissident academic first developed it as a detonator for his super-hydrogen bombs, and then turned his attention to another property of the infernal detonator. Turns out it kills all electronics. This is how the idea of making a separate non-nuclear bomb that spreads electromagnetic radiation after the explosion came about. 
That's how the notorious Rannick E came to be. How's Rannick E? The backpack weighed 5 tons and counting. Properly burned out all electronics in a radius of 15 kilometers with high frequency radiation pulse. But the development did not go into production due to its high technological complexity. In addition, in the mid 50s, the SA 75 Burkett, Davina, and Desna SAMs began to arrive in the armament of the air defense of the Azat in stages, having in addition to the conventional fragmentation and fugitive warheads and a special nuclear version with a capacity of up to 15 knots. Their task was to create an electromagnetic pulse of an atomic explosion capable of knocking out all onboard systems of an armada of U.S. strategic bombers and their accompanying fighters in one fell swoop. So Sakharov's generator was put under the Sukhno, considering the expenditure on the creation of a non-nuclear ME munition unnecessary. The first version of the presence of Alabuga in theory looks like this. Before us is the Sakharov fuse, a coil of inductance concentrically surrounded by an explosive substance with a high detonation velocity and encased in a heavy-duty casing. At the moment of triggering, a zone of extremely high pressure under a million atmospheres is created. The coil turns are compressed and create a short circuit effect. It goes without saying that in flight such a microwave is energized by the operation of a generator powered by the rocket jet. After shorting, the impulse is transmitted to the capacitor, and the capacitor delivers hundreds of megawatts in nanoseconds by instantaneous discharge. In theory, it should work that way. However, the quandary, the size and weight of such an installation confuses absolutely all experts. This way and that way, they twisted the component base, since the times of academician Sakharov, far gone in miniaturization, and no, it does not work. You can't fit that into a tactical cruise missile, except for a bomb of rather impressive size. But inquiring minds suggested a second option. It's also from the arsenal of atomic Armageddon, it's called a UWI, shock wave emitter. And it is designed for an implosion-type nuclear bomb, where synchronously exploding charges compress the stuffing of the munition, taking it from a critical state to a supercritical state, to the process of thermonuclear fusion. Thanks to this scheme, 97% of the main energy output of the experimental Soviet Tsar bomb, aka Kustina Mat, which was detonated in 1961 and showed a record of 58 megatons. So here it is, so as not to burden you with the detonation circuitry, that a good Russian humanities man can't figure out without a ladle of hardy strong stuff. Let's put it this way, with depressed mercury, the presence of such and such a mother and rim geometry, a complex system of permanent magnets and magnet wires around a central cavity, with a single crystal of iodide placed inside, cesium, a spherical shock wave of electromagnetic radiation, you can get it, without radioactive materials. The cleverly magnetized single crystal goes into an ionized state, creates a hard magnetic field strength, the very babak that burns out the chips of the suppressor. And the mass dimensional appearance of such a product is quite stackable with an air-to-air -air missile. There is a third type of speculation as to how Alabuga is set up, but it's such a plasma zor there that we're not ready to just share that. Anyway, not the point, since the issue is more political than military technical with a Russian flying microwave. That we have all the competencies to create combat emissions with that, no one argues in the West. Our lost edge looking partners are scared to wet tights at the thought that their entire nuclear potential may turn out to be useless junk from the use of humanitarian weapons that do no harm to people. But it is guaranteed to disarm absolutely all modern control, communication, detection and firefighting systems, where there is a single component of radio electronics. Early 20th century, this is what NATO strategists are so afraid of, rifles, cannons with firing tables, field telephones with pen, vestry and carrier pigeons. That's the whole arsenal of warfare. So panicky calls to shut down the developments look not like a figure of speech, but a very real fear of Stoltenberg. In addition to US intelligence data, having printouts of the press conference of Vladimir Mikheyev, advisor to the director general of CRED Vladimir Mikheyev, yes, he did not disclose to journalists weary of waiting for sensations, exactly what characteristics and design solutions are incorporated in Alabuga, but confirmed, quote, the missile is a complex of scientific research in the use of microwave radiation. End of scenario. And that back in 2012, the mock-ups were tested in range conditions, the effectiveness of the impact of high-precision radiation on complex equipment was noted. Both conventional jamming effects with temporary disabling of the enemy's weapon systems and military equipment and complete radio-electronic defeat resulting in energy-destructive damage to the main electronic elements of boards, units and systems were recorded. So for the time being, let's assume that the Alabuga EMP complex is completed for a missile carrier, capable of disabling all types of electronic equipment of the enemy, located within a radius of 4 kilometers from the place of pulse generation. 
Where could a cruise missile throw him? Probably very far away, since the NATO soldiers started fidgeting and changing their underpants. Let's just leave it at that. Let them bite their elbows, noting how they refused the gift of the traitor Yeltsin, who handed over to Clinton the developments of the Research Institute of Radio Instrumentation and the IOFI Institute of Physics and Technology on electromagnetic types of weapons and proposed a joint project for its development. The money is American, the technical base and brains are ours. That some of these documents are used by the Americans in creating analogs of Alabuga is a well-known fact. Only here, as with hypersonic, is the situation. Samples exist, but they don't fly. Or they don't do what's wanted of them. Relaxed hegemon. Oops, relaxed. You wrote off the Russian lefty too soon.